The Call of Duty franchise is one that evokes memories of when everything was better just 6 to 10 years ago. Back when, despite the whole recession hitting, you could still come home from school, down another Mountain Dew, and play video games with your friends on Xbox Live, and maybe make some new ones by playing online. It's when social media had an optimistic outlook, when it was what the kids used to keep in touch, and then when Facebook came around, it's what everybody used to keep in touch, before it would show itself to be the ruination of society and as a way of trying to control people. It's when you could still get excited for new video games, and you would actually feel more like that $60 you plopped down on the new Call of Duty would be worth it. It's when you predicted your adult years to be moving out, going to college, getting a nice job, not staring at the decay of society as you work as a burger flipper or shelf stalker for $8 an hour or worse, jobless as you live with your parents at the age of 23 with a beat up car and no skills other than, well, video games and whatnot. You'll turn the TV on and you'll see them talking about how, oh, there, there, there are all these new jobs and you're like, where the hell are these jobs going to? It's when you could look at adults older than you and see them going places. I mean, I have some family members who are like distant family, sure, but they've gone on to work some nice, nice jobs. And um, like, for example, one of them works at this major tech company designing like electronic devices and whatnot. And that's when you could look at adults older than you and see them going places, not being bugs who sit around all day in front of mass market video games like the Nintendo Switch or Marvel movies and waste their money on expensive gadgets. Oh, I gotta get the new iPhone. Oh, I gotta get a smartwatch. Oh, I gotta get an Amazon Echo so the government can listen in on me. During that time, Call of Duty was a sales machine selling millions of copies every year, similar to the business model employed by sports games and Pokemon, but eventually that business model has been fizzling out and Call of Duty is no longer the game that middle schoolers or high schoolers or that guy at the cell phone shop play. Nowadays, Call of Duty has been a complete joke ever since the Xbox One and PS4 came out, with cracks showing in the series with Modern Warfare 3 and maybe as early as Modern Warfare 2 with the whole Infinity War staff thing where pretty much all the staff quit. Ghost sucked. Advanced Warfare changed the series too much for an audience expecting another Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops 2 with the new movement system. Black Ops 3 tried another movement system that was a failure and topped it with an online filled with quick deaths, bad maps, and campers. Infinite Warfare was a reskin of Black Ops 3, nothing more, nothing less. And World War 2 is Black Ops 3 minus the movement system. But hey, it did have a multiplayer with no swastikas in the multiplayer maps despite being a World War II game, and you could play as a female soldier, and you could set the transgender flag, or uh, the asexual flag, or the bisexual flag, to your um, profile-like background. So, you could be a Nazi in World War II who's also a female trans woman. God, I love diversity, and um... Yeah, take that, bigots. Call of Duty is, uh, it's woke. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 isn't even out yet, and the series is really crumbling. Black Ops 4 tries to shift the franchise into a full-on multiplayer-only game with no five-hour campaign, and yet it doesn't take notes from the current business model of even Activision's Blizzard division or any other big publisher really doing the same thing by offering free content updates like free maps or free weapons instead of... Instead... Actually, Activision is locking all the DLC behind the Season Pass, and only the Season Pass. You can't just buy the DLC separately, it's locked behind the Season Pass. Oh, and there's a Battle Royale mode, because even though that genre will be about as uncool as motion gimmick games or Pokemon Go in a few years, they gotta add it anyway, because that's what the cool kids are playing. The multiplayer beta is locked away behind a pre-order, unless you're playing the PC version, and this is the version I'm playing. Now, Black Ops 4 on the PC has been marketed as a return to form for the series on the PC after the series' is slow decline on the PC. First from the Modern Warfare 2 port lacking dedicated servers and Activision trying to shut down modders adding dedicated servers back to the point where IW4X is hosted on tour of all places. Next from a series of bad PC ports and finally from the fact that modern PC gamers 
being Nintendo refugees and now rich kids are very apathetic about Call of Duty, preferring to play CSGO, Siege, Minecraft, and Fortnite. So what does Black Ops 4 do on the PC to make itself become the new PC game that all the cool kids want to play? Well, first of all, it's being developed by Beanox, you know, the same people who made the, uh, the amazing port of Black Ops 3 to the last-gen consoles. And it's also being released only on Battle.net instead of Steam. And Battle.net's the same service that hosts the Blizzard games in Destiny 2. Moving Modern Warfare 2 to Steam in an era where multiplayer games are run with game spy and server lists with disc, disc checks being the sole DRM was controversial. And now as PC gamers normalize Steam, instead of keeping it on Steam, where anyone can buy it, they just decide to move it to Battle.net, which is their own surface. I mean, it failed for EA and Ubisoft with Origin and Uplay, respectively, so why not do what failed for them and got them a lot of hatred from internet gamers by putting Black Ops 4 only on Activision's own service? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? It's not like PC gamers are just going to ignore it because Steam's like the de facto storefront for PC gaming. When you download the game on Battle.net, you'll get tons of ads saying to pre-order now while you're downloading the beta because Activision needs more money. And even though their CEO is probably rich and flies a private jet, you know, they need more money. When it's done, you can start the game and then, well, you can experience disappointments. When I went into playing Black Ops 4, I was already in somewhat of a shitty mood. After struggling with a failed tech repair that Armchair Geniuses told me was fixable even though it had nasty corroded chips and board corrosion that might have gotten to the ICs, after realizing that I've been fed delusions of being a computer genius just because everyone in my town struggles to use their computers just because, um, well there's a lot of reasons I say that, but that's the mentality in America nowadays. If you can reset a router, you're a computer genius. And after seeing shit online that genuinely unnerved me and made me think that giving kids tech at young ages was the worst idea since, oh, I don't know, the American education system that tells these same kids that they'll be astronauts and computer wizards when they grow up, but in reality trains them to be good little consumers who work as fry cooks and desk clerks working dead-end jobs that they absolutely hate on minimum wage. So after drinking a Mountain Dew and uh, ripping a few vapes, I decided to go on Black Ops 4 and see if this was any good like the Call of Duty YouTubers who likely take money from Activision are saying it is. And the first thing I noticed is that they decide to throw the user interface out the window and try to create a new one. And even in the beta, you can see that Call of Duty adopted the same mediocre cookie cutter multiplayer menu scheme other titles do where you just click play game and you get coddled into a game with a bunch of other random people. Instead of getting a nice easy list where you can choose what mode you want to play, that shows every aspect of the lobby right in your face like older titles did, there's all the multiplayer modes seem to be cr crowded up into a few playlists which just offer several modes. And instead of showing every aspect of the lobby right in your face like older titles did, including who's in your lobby, what part of the menu you're on, and other important details, they decided to throw out this and they fucked it all up i mean look at halo 3 that game still has some of the best multiplayer menus in any game how is it that games from 2007 which is like 11 years ago have better features than games made in 2018 i mean what the fuck is that logic all oh, right they're getting lazy and they're shitting these out the multiplayer of black ops 4 is well there's only one mode and because it's multiplayer and let's just say my expectations were extremely low and somehow these bottomed them out a bit. The first thing is that the game is badly optimized on PC. Now I'm playing the default settings and it looks alright I guess. It actually looks somewhat less blurry than the footage I recorded. But you know that's just what it's like using OBS for the first time and trying to play with the settings a bit because you know OBS is a bit far from it just works. Click a button and get a recording. And keep in mind the only reason I did this was my capture software which I've used for a long time action actually caused Black Ops 4 to crash. This is the first time I've seen this happen with any game I've used, mind you, and for just about any other game I've played, action has been my go-to software due to its ease of use. 
Now, despite the alright graphics that look okay, I guess, for a 360 game, the game has massive performance issues from frame rate drops to straight up freezing, and I got disconnected from lobbies a few times. There were fewer of these when OBS was not running, but even then I noticed frame rate issues and sometimes freezes. Furthermore, when I had the game running full screen, I was only able to play the game letterboxed on my CRT monitor, and when I ran the game in windowed mode to record, I noticed that my CPU usage and task manager was spiking. And I don't have some shitty Walmart laptop. I have a Dell T7500 upgraded with dual hex cores and 64 gigs of RAM, and I got this thing for like 100 bucks from a surplus sale. Anyhow, let's talk about the gameplay in Call for Money Camp Ops 4. So in Camp Ops 4, Treyarch decided to listen to the number one gameplay complaint with the series from the diehard fanbase as of late, which has been boots on the ground only, and so you get that. You can move fast, but there are no exosuits or jetpacks or anything like that. Specialists, probably one of the worst features of Black Ops 3 make a return as you choose your class when you begin each map and get special equipment which you can use once it recharges or you play the map long enough, just like in Activision's other hit shooter, Overwatch. The maps still feel ripped out of Black Ops 3 or World War 2, however, and they're small and you end up in corridors with enough nooks and crannies for campers to hide in and kill you instantly, and that's what you'll end up seeing in Black Ops 4. Campers, campers, and more campers. Oh look, you just got killed by somebody you didn't see right behind you, and you also die really quickly, and this is compounded by a major design decision Treyarch made with Black Ops 4. See, in Black Ops 4, Treyarch decided to mess with the core mechanics even more than the other titles did. With Advanced Warfare, for example, the core mechanics like running, shooting, aiming down sights, and whatnot were identical to previous Call of Duty titles. You had to get a variant of a pick 10 system to create a class, and for the most part, it was similar to older titles besides some character customization. And a lot of items in the supply drops were items you could add to your character to change your clothing. Its core gameplay was near identical to Black Ops 2, with a few of the better features from Ghosts or MW3 added in like support streaks or the ability to neutralize points and domination. Oh, and there was, an, there was the uplink mode and that was fun as hell. Black Ops 4, on the other hand, tries to mess with a lot of the core mechanics yet again, even more than Black Ops 3 did, and it doesn't feel great to play. Regenerating health is gone, and you now need to press a key to heal up, and it can also feel like it has a wait time. You know grenades, one of the things you could use as a defense against campers and whatnot? They're gone unless you choose a specialist that has them, and you can't equip them anymore, and there's a recharge time, even after you die, so... You die as quick as you would in Black Ops 3 or MW3, but at least it's boots on the ground, that's what I want. Give it to me, Activision. The multiplayer maps are the usual Call of Duty cliches, except they're not fun because of the poor map design. There's a jungle area next to a nice sea area. There's a nice beautiful rural city area that you can only move to if you're rich, or that likely only has jobs in the tourism sector of that. There's a private villa. There's a torn up city, that's a war zone. There's a military base, and uh, there's probably a few more maps in the Call of Duty cliche, like, that are there as well, if I could, like, either find them in matchmaking, or they're probably in the full game. The art direction on the maps is alright, even if it has that sterile tech demo or benchmark feeling, and it's let down mostly by the bloated engine and the fact that you're still playing a shitty $60 multiplayer-only game, where you die quick, it's frustrating, it's buggy, and all that fun shit. Here's the thing with Call of Duty, it's going to be dead in a few years at the most, like what happened with Tony Hawk and Guitar Hero. I mean, shit, look how everyone who streams Guitar Hero plays a freeware, freeware clone of it instead. They all play Clone Hero now. And why did they choose to clusterfuck the multiplayer menus? I mean, this is Call of Duty after all. One of the whole reasons the older games sold so well was because you could just pick them up and play without having to read a manual you don't get anymore because to save the trees they quit printing manuals, and because they didn't fuck with the core formula too much. Even Advanced Warfare, like I said, still has many of the core pieces of the core formula of Call of Duty in the game. And Black Ops 4 is another shit show. In a franchise that's more identity confused than a middle school internet addicted teenager who brags about wanting to die everywhere they go online and decides to make irreversible body changes even though they're only what 14 or something like that age 
because at their school it's the new subculture like goths, emos, and UFC fans who wore tap out shirts to class every day. Or more accurately, it's as identity confused as one of the specialists you can choose in the multiplayer who looks just like those people. They're trying to add in Overwatch style specialists. They're trying to add in a battle royale mode because, I mean, all the kids are playing Fortnite now. And, uh, you can play as the average U.S. military soldier in the year 2070, where the only people who still fight in the wars are people who look like fast food employees. And that's what's going to happen with Black Ops 4. It's going to die out. That's the thing. It's going to die out real quick. You're going to see copies of this piling up at GameStop, and the only people who play Black Ops 4 are going to be the kids who play the zombie mode in Call of Duty because... That's what a lot of kids love, is the zombie mode in Call of Duty. That That's going to be the only mode people play, just like what happened with Black Ops 3. It's going to be a dumpster fire. It will be a dumpster fire. People are going to quit playing Black Ops 4 not long after it comes out. They're going to go back to Fortnite. They're going to go back to, to uh, Siege. They're going to go back to maybe CSGO if they're a PC gamer. Oh, right. If they're a PC gamer, they're not even going to pick it up. They're just going to play CSGO all day like they always do. And that's what Black Ops 4 is going to be. It's going to be another dead game. Mark my words. But, you know, it, it, it's going to... At least it's boots on the ground this time, I guess. I mean, that's what all the COD kitties want. So, yeah. Black Ops 4 is going to be a piece of shit game. And this is just the beta. This isn't even the final game. It, it's like how many months? It's, it's August. Probably three more months before this game comes out. I haven't looked up the release date, but it's probably November, I guess, because the last ten or so Call of Duty titles were released in November. So yeah, don't buy Black Ops 4. It's another piece of shit game that's going to die off in a few months. And that's all that has to be said. Don't waste your money on this garbage. Please don't.